everyone. Good evening. Uh, in accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast live over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel on Facebook Live on the Public Access Facebook page and will be uploaded to the Lunenburg Access YouTube channel within 24 hours after the meeting has concluded. Uh, if you would like to join tonight's meeting for public comment only by Zoom, you can do so on your computer phone or a smart device. Tonight's webinar ID is 909-174-0347. If you wish to join the Zoom by phone, you can do so by dialing 888-475-4499. And once again, the webinar ID is 909-174-0347. Uh, the agenda lists all topics which may be discussed at this meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as a result of these discussions. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting law. Uh, do we have any public comment from the board this evening? None. No. None. Uh, I will say as a aside, I'm glad that Henri did what it did, which was to Lunenburg, which is basically nothing except rain and I don't think many people are complaining about that. So, uh, although I did get a lot of alerts on my phone about tornadoes, glad we didn't have those either. Any public comment from the public? Also, no. Any announcements? No announcements. No announcements. Uh, we have a 705, but before we do that, let's jump to ratification of town manager's appointment of a full-time patrol officer, Joel Ortega to be effective December 5th, 2021, if approved tonight. Madam Town Manager. I'd just like to ask the police chief to come up. Thank you, Madam Town Manager, and through you, Mr. Alonzo. Um, thank you for having us tonight. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's nice to be back in person. Um, I missed the last one that, um, well, fortunately, I was on vacation, but it was it was nice. Um, I'm glad to be in front of you to present uh, Officer Joel Ortega. Um, we were before you in, a, I believe, in February to appoint him as a reserve officer. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background for, on him. He graduated from the MPTC Reserve Intermittent Academy last year in June. Um, he successfully completed a background investigation, pre-employment physical, and a psychological examination. Joel has completed the department's 250 hours of field training in a relatively short period of time. Um, he is a resident of Fitchburg, graduate of Lemister Lim High School. He's also a graduate of Mount Wachusett Community College and has an associate's degree of science and criminal justice. Joel speaks fl uh, two languages fluently, English and Spanish. Um, when we brought him before you as a reserve officer to be appointed, uh, we talked about his background and through his background we found that he was a very dedicated, honest and a well thought of person. One of the things that was told to me and told to my background investigator that he was one of the best humans on the planet. Um, having seen him work with us and uh, being a part of our department so far, um, I would have to concur with that. Uh, I put in my letter to the board and to the town manager that every time he walks in the building he has an infectious smile and it just brings just a positive attitude every time he walks through that door. And it resonates with everybody he's around. Um, as of now, he is, we are asking that um, he be appointed December 5th, the day before the academy is to start. Uh, to this point in his career, he has lived up to every expectation that uh, we thought of him and that we, we anticipated from him. He participates in everything we ask. He is always volunteering to help. He participated in the barbecue that we have for the seniors. He also participated in the Memorial Day service hosted by Mr. Jeffries. Um, and he's readily available, whatever we ask, whether it's shifts, prisoner watches, details, he always helps out. Um, he's a pleasure to have around. Um, I'm excited to see what he is gonna do in his career, and I would ask that you ratify the appointment. Thank you. Would you like to say some words? Yeah, I just want to say I want to say thank you for this opportunity. I can't wait to grow in this department. And thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions for the 
chief or for the applicant. No questions. No. Any uh, comments? Comments? Just want to say uh, thank you, Gracias. Thank you, uh, Joel, for uh, coming aboard. Not an easy job these days, so uh, very, very proud that you stepped forward and heard all kinds of good things about you. And yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you as well for stepping forward and for the contribution you have. And it's always comforting to hear when the chief gives such glowing uh, comments uh, and hearing how you've integrated well into the force. So that's excellent. Thank you. So this is exciting. I, I agree with everything I, that was said and uh, high words of, of praise from the chief and the department. It's always interesting to see how people react when people speak of them that way. <laughs> so that gives a good insight into somebody's character as well. But obviously coming from just being appointed re in the recent past to reserve officer to be uh, appointed a full-time officer is an excellent progress and obviously people think very highly of you, and because they do, I do as well. So uh, I will entertain a motion regarding the appoint or the ratification of the appointment of now, I, I heard the chief say Joel, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Okay, so Joel Ortega to full-time patrol officer effective December 5th, 2021. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, it's 705. We have the finance director's FY 2021 fourth quarter financial report. And I have more good news, so you we'll just what? keep I have more good news, so we'll just keep the good news rolling. All right, I like good news. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, I'm just going to give you a quick summary of where we ended fiscal year 21 at the close of the fiscal year on June 30th, 2021. Um, on the revenue side, total collections for FY21 were $44,252,050, and that actually exceeded our estimates by 2.2% or $935,001. The summary for that dollar amount is made up from several categories. The first one is local receipts. And for our local receipts, we exceeded our estimates by 19.26% or $590,516. There were only three of the 14 categories that are in our local receipt estimates that were below what was estimated and those were fines and forfeits which were thirteen thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars below what we estimated or 51 percent departmental revenue other which is um, our ambulance receipts those were below our estimate by eight thousand two hundred thirty seven dollars or three point one four percent and investment income was $27,350 below our estimate or 43.46% below. Um, some of the reasons for the investment income obviously were a result of what happened with the pandemic and probably on the other ones as well because a lot of things changed during the year because of that. But on the good side, every one of our local receipt categories exceeded estimates with the exception of the three that I mentioned. Of interest in those categories is um, motor vehicle excise, which, let me see here, exceeded our estimates by $307,158. We also had penalties and interest, and that exceeded our estimate by $104,514. And um, miscellaneous non-recurring re uh, exceeded our estimates by $98,055. I think some of the reason why we saw the increases that we saw is at the time that we set the budget for FY21, 
we level funded our local receipts not knowing what was going to happen at the time with everything that was going on with the pandemic and so we were very conservative with those estimates and as a result we exceeded our local receipt estimates by $590,516. Another thing I'd like to point out is, as the town manager always says, these are elastic revenues and are very dependent on the economy, and also that any amounts that we receive above what we estimated will hopefully translate into free cash at the end of the year. And that free cash is usually used in the following year to fund our capital plan, transfers into our OPEB account, and transfers into our stabilization funds. And one of the things I'd like to say is we've been very fortunate over the years, over, the, over at least the last several years, to have free cash in order to fund our capital plan. And because of that, we've not had to do any borrowing, so we've saved significant money in interest costs that we would normally have paid years past because we didn't have the free cash in order to fund that plan. Um, taxes for the tax levy, net of our overlay, that was $28,776. $28,776,250, and we received 99.7% of the estimate. We also received tax lien revenue in the amount of $220,774, so as a result of that collection, our overall taxes, tax collection exceeded estimates by 0.47%. On the state aid side, we received 2.64% more than what we estimated, or $240,260. And the primary reason for that increase was in FY21, we received a zoning incentive payment for the Tritown housing project in the amount of $210,000, and we also um, got more than what we had original than what was on the cherry sheet for our smart growth school cost reimbursement or 40s funds by $44,345 on the expenditure side the budgeted expenditures were $43,317,048 and we actually expended 97 percent of that budget, um, the balance at the end of the year for all unexpended, unencumbered funds was $1,249,950. And I did provide you with a summary of the different appropriations and how much was closed out in each one. I'll just read the summaries for each category and what was closed out. So under total general government unclassified, which is mostly all of our insurances, there was a closeout of $425,545. General government, which is basically all of our town offices, there was a closeout of $116,013. Central purchasing, there was a closeout of $10,412. For um, total protection, there, which includes police, fire, building inspector, all of our inspectors, there was a closeout of $90,288. For health and sanitation, there was a closeout of $21.65. For the DPW, there was a closeout of $67,733. Facilities and buildings, $66,143. The recycling program, $768. The total assistance, which is Council on Aging, our Veterans Administration and Veterans Benefits, there was a closeout of $32,473. The school's total closeout was $491,127, and the library was $8,371.
So as I said, the total appropriation closeouts at the close of FY21 was $1,308,893. And then we also had state assessments which exceeded our estimates by $59,984. We had a closeout in our tax title account of $41.20. So the total of all of that is $1,249,950. Um, with that being said, I did a calculation of what I think our free cash will be at the close of FY21. And my estimate at this point in time is 2,675,000. That is an increase of $871,000 over our certif certified free cash for the close of FY20. And when I was looking at this too, that when I originally was looking at the closeout of FY20, it seemed to me like the like the appropriation closeouts were high, so I just looked back into FY20, and at the close of FY20, we closed out 1,242,000, and for 21, we closed out 1,249,000. So those numbers were pretty constant from FY20 to FY21. One of the things that we really did exceed estimates on were our revenues, and like I said, I think a lot of that was when, when COVID originally happened, there were things like they pushed back the dates that penalties and interests would be charged on tax bills, motor vehicle bills, and that sort of thing. So at the end of June of FY20 is when everything that there was a time frame from I think it was like March to June where everything was put on hold and then we were allowed to collect the penalties and interest going back to when the original date was due. So I think we realized a lot of that revenue in FY21. And then, like I said, when we put together the budget for FY21, we were very conservative with our local receipt estimates, not knowing what was going to happen as a result of the pandemic. And I do have to say we fed very well. So, I mean, it's an, uh, it's an $800,000, it's about a little over $800,000 increase that I estimate um, our free cash will be certified at over FY20. Well, how did the CARES Act impact any of these numbers? The CARES Act, well, I mean, there were probably expenses that if we didn't have the CARES Act fund would have been borne by the budgets. So we would have seen a much lower appropriation closeout at the end of the year. But I mean, all of those COVID costs that we could consider eligible under the CARES Act or FEMA funding, we moved over to those funds. I, I know, I realize that, but did you, do you have a, did you quantify that, how much that was well between the two accounts it i think it would have been about between three and four hundred thousand i would say okay. because we've received a portion of the cares act we've re actually received more from the state under the cares act than what we've expended but we're still waiting for reimbursement from fema for the federal side of okay. things so okay yeah, that number would have been reduced significantly had those funding sources not been available to us. And on the revenue side, that one-time payment for the Tritown housing project is right. 210000 yeah. yep. alone. So that, that's a one-time benefit. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Excellent. Anybody have any questions for the finance director? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anytime you want to come and give us good news like that, <laughs> No, I mean, welcome. and I knew way back that things were looking very optimis optimistic for us as far as the closeout, but this was even better than what I had anticipated at the end of the last quarter, so good news. Well, I think it's good to put in conservative 
financial practices, and this is a good example of that. So, oh, I, uh, I agree with the local receipts 100% yep. to be as conservative as yep. possible with those because that directly translates to free cash that we're able to fund our capital plan with. And like I said, in years past, and you know, because you've been around as long as I have, we've, all, you know, we've had to borrow for a lot of our larger ticket items and bear those interest costs. And we've been fortunate enough over the last several years that we haven't had to do that. So, yeah. so I will say publicly what I've said to and the whole team, the, the whole board here has said privately and otherwise. I mean, I, I appreciate the work that you and the town manager and your teams have done in putting, you know, Lunenburg in a very solid financial position and maintaining that so year after year. So thank you. Yeah, because I, I mean, I hear from other communities and Lunenburg is doing very well. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Karen. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Uh, Seven fifteen. We have a joint meeting with the housing authority to conduct an interview and vote to fill a vacant housing authority tenant board member seat. Mr. Stanley Randall of one thirty one White Street. Uh, is the housing authority here? I think Mr. Randall's in the back row. Excuse me. Mr. Randall, I think is in the back row. There's only two of you. So we don't have one. So we're just in one. Well, are they elected? It's a joint appointment. Oh, no, it's, it's our appointment. It's a joint meeting. Okay, gotcha. So, Mr. Randall, would you like to come forward and introduce yourself, please? Yes, I'm Stan Randall. I live at 131 White Street, apartment D4. Can you tell us why you want to be on the well, housing? I lived, uh, lived in Lunenburg for 36 years. I lived down at the housing uh, now for almost two and a half years. Uh, I, I see what's going on there and uh, I have a lot of concerns about uh, the tenants there. They, they become f my friends. I live with these people. I hear what's going on, I see what's going on and uh, there's a lot of dissension and uh, a lot of animosity going on and, and uh, they're being mistreated in my opinion and uh, yet they're, they're being hum humiliated, that they're being uh, mistreated and uh, Degraded and uh, intimidated, and uh, and uh, being retaliated against if they say things, and uh, there's a lot of disorganization at the housing going on, and uh, I decided I've had enough, and that it's time for somebody to stand up and be a voice for these people, and this is why I applied because nobody else applied, and. Uh, I can, you know, I, I had uh, 20 years in police work, uh, 16 years in the Air Police Department, four years in the service. I know uh, how to organize people and, and, and uh, manage uh, uh, people. And uh, something, you know, it's just, I don't think the town of Lunenburg is getting the dollars worth down there. And uh, there's a lot of things, funny things going on. And I'll give you one example, and I don't want to uh, take a lot of time on the board because Recently, after the COVID ended, and they reopened the community building, maintenance had the bright idea of installing water-saving faucets on the uh, laundry sink, the uh, bathroom utility sink, and the kitchen sink. That's the ones where you put your hand under and the water comes on. Well, they did that, and the plumber, I don't know why, it's beyond me. You couldn't get in any hot water. You'd have to stand there for 10 minutes and you still would not get no hot water running the water. And uh, so I brought it to the attention of the board and I was told that uh, they provide water. I said, you're supposed to provide water that's warm and hot. I said, it's supposed to be a certain degree. And I said, uh, we just went through a year of uh, washing hands and, and sanitary over COVID. And now you're gonna tell us we have to wash our hands with cold water. It didn't make sense to me. So, and, so what happened is they had to call the plumber back and they, they determined they had to put in a new tank, a water tank or something. And till this day, it still doesn't work properly because I put my hand under the faucet, checking them, and it was five minutes before you got lukewarm water. I know it's not 110 degrees to 130 degrees. 
and uh, it's just not acceptable. And the, the town of Lunenburg is being paid for uh, paying for this stuff. And it's just uh, I could go on and on. And I, I don't want to bother the board, but I'm upset with it, and I I I, I feel terrible to see that the the residents that I I live with they feel uneasy, they're intimidated, they feel like they're going to be retaliated if they make any complaints. This is, this is not the way that we should be under our lives. I'll be 73 Friday. I don't need this aggravation, but somebody has to stand up for these people, and, and I've decided I'm going to stand up. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for, for standing up and for explaining what's going on. Anybody have any questions for Mr. No Randall? Um, I don't uh, I appreciate you staying Not to here. interrupt you, but I know that uh, it's a new experience for me and that I'm going to have to have some comp comprehensive training through the uh, Department of Housing and uh, Community Development along with the uh, King uh, organization. I don't know what my role will be, but I know one thing, I'm going to be a voice. I'm not going to be a, a stamp man, you know, and I'm not afraid to, to talk up to these people. If something's wrong, it's got to be straightened out. I've just met you tonight, and I already believe you that that's <laughs> going to be true. Seriously. I, I, and any training, of course, talk to the housing authority directly, and any, any assistance you may need for getting people trained if you're not getting the, the resource. By, by law, they have to be trained. Okay. Mr. I, Jeffries. Yeah, I appreciate you standing up. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting with you. I think that was about six weeks ago or so, and several other uh, residents who live um, who live down there uh, with you. And I understand. You know, I've sent several emails uh, to the housing authority, as well as to Mr. Uh, Mr. Gold, who's the head of who's contracted to provide the services. And I think that there's cause for concern. I think there's a lot of cause for concern. I think I've done a pretty good job of documenting that for the housing authority of what my conversations revealed so that way as members you can pick that up given the separation of our duties and responsibilities but i i appreciate you standing up i have no doubt that this is what's necessary and i'm also grateful you know to the town manager for posting this vacancy um you know looking into the vacancies that exist on the housing authority board so that way we get a fully staffed board uh to be able to look into some of the concerns so thank you Thank you. So I'd entertain a motion on the appointment of Mr. Stanley Randall of 131 White Street to the Housing Authority Tenant Board member seat. Yeah, I'm. Go ahead. I move to appoint Stanley Randall uh, to the Housing Authority Tenant Board member seat for a term to expire in 2023. Second. Mm -hmm. All those. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. None. Uh, please see the town clerk at your earliest convenience to be sworn in. Yes, sir. And then uh, work with the housing authority members to find out when the next meetings are and start that training. All right, thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Okay, 7.30 on the nose. Look at this. Mm -hmm. It's like a Swiss clock here. A meeting with town council regarding the 40B comment letter in response to the site approval application from Pondview Commons LLC. Mr. Costa. And Madam Town Manager, I don't know how either one of you want to introduce this. No. Um, so as the board is aware and, and hopefully the public through many public announcements, we have um, a comment letter that we have to submit to Mass Housing by September 2nd. Um, so tonight was, uh, time was set aside to meet with Town Council to review the components of our comment letter. Uh, we, the deadline for comments from any residents or other boards were due yesterday. So we have a full complement. Um, We've received 21 resident comments. We received a letter from the planning board, two letters from Hickory Hills Landowners Incorporated, two reports from the police chief, a letter from the water district, and a letter from the sewer commission. So we have a full range of um, commentary and concerns from both public and appropriate staff and boards. 
So I guess take us through what the next steps are. I will. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Adam Costa, Town Council. Uh, so for your benefit and for the benefit of, of those in attendance and, and the viewers, um, as you know, I, I provided a, a 40B workshop presentation just about two weeks ago uh, to members of your board and others who wish to attend and uh, gave an explanation of the 40B process sort of uh, from soup to nuts. And so we are at the, we are at the beginning of that process. Um, 40B process starts with an applicant uh, making a request or an application to a project subsidy, in this case for the Pondview Commons project, that subsidy is the Massachusetts Housing Finance Agency, often referred to as Mass Housing. And when that application is made to Mass Housing, there is a requirement that Mass Housing provide notice to the municipality of a potential incoming Chapter 40B comprehensive permit application. And the municipality is given an opportunity, typically 30 days, to provide public comment on the application. Uh, and as I had discussed during the 40B workshop, it is not your only bite at the apple. In fact, it is barely a bite at the apple at all. Many communities don't even take the opportunity to offer much by way of public comment. And so I commend uh, the town manager and uh, staff for being as responsive as you have been uh, in soliciting comments and compiling comments from various boards, commissions, committees, departments, officials, uh, and even, even independent districts concerning this particular proposal. Uh, the process now is to, to uh, formally compile those various comment letters that you just heard referenced. Uh, I spoke to the town manager yesterday. We, we had a meeting to discuss what's been received so far. Uh, she is going to work to put together uh, a form of a cover letter that summarizes the various comments that have been received. I provided her with a format that I've used before in other communities. Uh, I'm also working on a, a letter of my own um, that will address some of the legal issues that might be associated with this potential application. Uh, and all of that information would be submitted uh, by next week's deadline. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday, the Thursday. second. Will be submitted by the second uh, of September to Mass Housing. And when Mass Housing receives those comments, it will consider those comments uh, in, in light of the 40B scheme. We'll consider those comments in light of the application that's before it, and we'll make a decision whether or not to issue what's referred to as a project eligibility letter. Um, so as to not get the town's hopes up, I know that you know 40B is a swear word in many communities, and uh, 40Bs are are uh, are concerning because the the nature of 40B is that it tends to be much more dense than its surroundings, and um, is often in areas that 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 uh, are cause for concern among among nearby residents who may live in less dense housing. Um, you know, with that said, um, these project subsidies routinely issue these project eligibility letters. Uh, these are preliminary determinations. They don't bind the town to issue a comprehensive permit. They don't bind the subsidizing agency to issue final approval after a comprehensive permit issues, if a comprehensive permit issues. And so the, the, the purview of the subsidizing agency, the scope of its review at this stage in the process is very limited. It looks to the materials that it's received to determine whether the entity that is proposing the Chapter 40B project is a qualified entity. They look to uh, the nature of the project to determine whether there's sufficient land area, whether there are critical concerns. And what you and I may consider critical and what the subsidizing agency might consider critical are not necessarily one and the same thing, but they will look for what they consider to be critical concerns that might prevent their endorsement, their determination that this particular applicant, this particular project is eligible. So. In far more cases, and I don't have the statistics, but I would probably say maybe nine out of every 10 cases, project eligibility letters do issue after applications have been made to project subsidies. So again, we've made a significant effort to compile, compile comments that we hope that the subsidizing agency will take into consideration. And uh, if it deems appropriate, reject uh, uh, the issuance of a PEL or if it deems appropriate, issue a PEL, but do so with conditions that require the applicant, very expressly require the applicant to address uh, the various concerns that have been raised as part of the permitting, the remaining permitting process uh, before the Zoning Board of Appeals and then back before the, the subsidizing agency uh, for final approval. So that's where we are with the process. What I would expect once we submit our, our response, uh, our, our comment letter uh, by next Thursday's deadline, I would expect that we'll wait uh, a period of time. That could be 30 days, could be 60 days for the subsidizing agency to process that comment letter and to fully process the application that prompted it, and then to determine whether it's going to issue that letter of project eligibility. And if it does issue that letter of project eligibility, that letter will go to the applicant. The town will receive notice that it has issued. 
and then the ball is in the applicant's court. The applicant would then compile its comprehensive permit application, which consists of many of the same documents that it has already compiled for its application to mass housing for preliminary determination of applicability. Some applicants turn that around in a matter of a couple of weeks, and two weeks after the PEL issues, you have an application for a comprehensive permit submitted to your ZBA. Uh, I would say the norm is that the turnaround isn't quite so quick, uh, 30 days, maybe 60 days for the applicant to compile whatever additional information is necessary uh, to put it in the proper format and to submit it to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And that kicks off the more formal permitting process before the ZBA with a public hearing that would open, notice that would issue to parties in interest, abutters, abutters to abutters within 300 feet of the project site. Um, and then those, those succession of public hearings when the board can fully vet and evaluate the application and after it's it's comfortable with uh, the information that it's received uh, make an informed decision to either grant or, or deny the comprehensive permit uh, that process by regulation can take up to uh, 180 days from the date of opening of the public hearing until the date of closing of the public hearing that's you know plus the 30 days at the front end from the date of receipt of the application until the date that the public hearing is opened and then depending upon the, the speed with which an applicant cooperates or provides additional information, there are routinely extensions of that deadline. So it's not unusual for a comprehensive permit process from the date that the ZBA receives an application to run somewhere in the vicinity of uh, six to 12 months. Uh, I've had them go as long as two years um, or longer in one instance. Um, I've had them get approved much more quickly when they're simpler projects and uh, not as controversial. So that all remains to be seen. But, um, you know, we started the process with that workshop a couple of weeks ago. I have had an opportunity to have a uh, preliminary meeting with the chair of your zoning board of appeals just to discuss, you know, nothing really of substance, but process and procedure a bit in terms of how the process unfolds. He's familiar with that process. He's been the chair of that board for a number of years. My understanding is that two other members of that board have been members of that board for a number of years, maybe three. Uh, and they've actually uh, presided over two, I think three other 40B applications in their years on that board. So they're generally familiar with the 40B process. That of course says nothing about this particular project, but they know they know the process and the procedure, which is which is helpful. I don't know if you wanted to go through so how the format of the letter um, that attorney Costa and I discussed would be categories of concerns um, so preliminarily like traffic safety pedestrian safety accessibility project size access and egress from site sewer infrastructure water infrastructure legal concerns these are in no priority order um, stormwater considerations open space uh, unique environmental harm um, so those are the the main categories right now that we started with. Yeah, as the town manager is forwarded to the board, the letters from the public and the various boards, uh, you know, I'm assuming that we would compile the, you know, the important highlights and I mm -hmm. guess those categories probably do a good job. I, I can't speak if it's an, ext you know, an extensive job because maybe there are other categories that weren't there, but mm -hmm. certainly those are the major ones, mm -hmm. that that's what we would do and bring out those various points for all the various reasons. Can you provide a breakdown of the letters that you got from the boards and everybody with the general consensus? Was there, was there any that were for the project? No. Okay. And of course, it, it's that's a, a simple question and a simple answer, but um, the, the question may not as be, be as simple and the answer may not be as simple. So I think I've read uh, maybe not every one of the letters, but I think I've read many of the letters. And while I, I probably would characterize most as being against the project, mm -hmm. um, many of them have been focused on particular concerns that are within the purview sure. of, the, of the officer or the department. So mm -hmm. um, it's not 
you know, yay or nay on the project. It's we have this concern. Right. And so if that concern were addressed, maybe that would be support for the project. Maybe it wouldn't be. Um, I don't know. But it's it's they're, they're focused on the areas of, of expertise of these various boards and commissions and committees. So what uh, the town manager has attempted to do, not that I want to speak for you, Heather, but no, uh, it you. is is just characterize and, and, and cat categorize as best she can, consistent with the format I provided, um, the, the topics that have been addressed by these various letters. But we're going to provide the letters themselves as an right. attachment. Mm -hmm. So the, the hope would be, the expectation would be that Mass Housing is going to do what it ought to do, which is if it's going to provide an opportunity for the town and the town's people to, to offer comment, it's going to read all those comments. Um, it's not going to just read the cover letter and then say, okay, I, we, we get the gist of it and then move on. Um, but the cover letter does provide an opportunity for the town to really highlight, especially where there were some common themes. So, you know, there was one or two letters maybe that referenced stormwater. Uh, there were maybe a, a few more letters that referenced traffic. There were several letters that referenced concerns about utility services available at, at, at the property. So um, we do want to highlight those common themes, and the fact that they are common themes is really telling, I think, and ought to be telling to, to Mass Housing that the town has significant concerns about the appropriateness of the site. And I don't want to speak for your board, but at least the sense I'm getting from the letters I've received is that many agencies many boards or departments or uh, committees of the town have serious concerns about the appropriateness of this site for this type this style this size of development i don't know what else we can go on this topic tonight aside from this review if anybody has any questions or no questions i have one question <clears throat> mr jeffries uh, mass housing is um is the subsidizing subsidizing agency here which and uh, i probably should have asked this question when you gave your presentation but i didn't think of it then <laughs> um if mass housing denies the project eligibility my understanding is that they're providing funding uh can they go to one of the other subsidizing agencies and reapply they can. So it's not, um, and so the funding that Mass Housing provides is not the traditional funding as you might think a, a lender would provide. They're not necessarily providing dollars to allow the project to be constructed, they're, but they're, they're facilitating um, the ability of this project to qualify for uh, the sorts of financing options that would be necessary to develop an affordable housing project, which might otherwise be difficult to finance because of the nature of these types of projects. They're providing um, the, the mechanisms, the framework within which the 40B project can get approved, uh, the regulatory agreement that will ensure that there are limitations on uh, the profitability of the project to the developer, that will ensure that there is an affordability component for a minimum of 30 years, if not in perpetuity. Um, if they're denied a letter of project eligibility, nothing would ever prevent them from making an application to a different subsidy to seek the same sort of a letter. Um, I will tell you that in my experience, I've not seen many instances where an applicant that is denied, and again, I've not seen very many instances where an applicant is denied subsidy approval, but in those instances, I've not known that applicant to then have greater success going to another subsidy. There's only a handful of subsidies. You're dealing with mass housing, you're dealing with MHP. Uh, if it's a friendly project, meaning that you get the town's endorsement, the select board's endorsement before you proceed, you can go directly to the Department of Housing and Community Development, and uh, it will act as a subsidizing agency. Um, but with those, uh, other than those few that I've referenced, there aren't many other subsidizing agencies for these sorts of comprehensive permit projects. Thank you. Sure. Do you have anything else you wanted to discuss here? Is the board meeting again before, between now and your deadline on Thursday? We don't have a scheduled meeting. Right. So if I could make a suggestion um, through you, Mr. Chairman, I, I would just suggest that the board uh, vote to authorize. I presume you've seen the letters that have been incoming, that many of them have been circulated, that you just authorize the town manager to prepare a letter, a letter of transmittal, a cover letter that summarizes the general content of those letters, including those letters with the, the cover letter, and make the submittal by uh, or in advance of next Thursday's deadline. Um, I think that that would be proper protocol, just so there's no question that the select board authorized that action to occur. Thank you. Thanks. So I would entertain such a motion that the board, as advised by town council, the board authorized the town manager to compile the submittals for public comment and to uh, work with town council creating a, uh, a cover letter in submission of those public comments. So moved. 
Second. Any further discussion on that motion? Let's do a roll call on this one. Mr. Marino? Aye. Mr. Dwyer? Aye. Mr. Franco? Aye. Mr. Jeffries? Aye. And an aye from me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's jump down for a second because we have people waiting in the audience. Let's do the renewal of the annual earth removal permit for 1325 Mass Avenue. So this was held over from last week where the applicant or the, the current permit holder has asked for change in operational hours from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and changing the Monday to Friday to 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. and to add four hours on Saturday, 8 a.m. to noon with no trucking of material, just on-site work at the site. Again, 1325 Massachusetts Avenue. This was sent and noticed to interested parties, so I will open up if anybody wants to speak to it. Please. Hi, I'm Dawn Proctor Johnson. I'm Dan's sister. I'm here um, representing Dan and Jean Proctor, owners of the property. In case there are any questions, he apologizes that he couldn't be here tonight because he was offered Red Sox tickets for him and his <laughs> entire family. So he went to the Red Sox, but he asked me to stand in um, in case there were any questions and anything that I could speak on behalf of him. Um, he just wanted to say, obviously nothing's changed since last week and hopefully um, you'll see fit to vote in favor Thank of what you. he's asked for. Well, we did hold it over for this week so that we would hear if anybody had objections to these and what their objections might be. So does anybody have objections to this request? Is there anybody? There's, yes. She just unmuted herself. Pamela and Zaldi. Say again. Um, I just actually have a quick question. Yes. Um, last week, uh, it was uh, suggested by the vice chair that perhaps a compromise for Mr. Proctor asking for Saturday that he would be amenable to change the hours to 9 to 12. So I guess my question is, is that off the table? Um, no, I don't think it's off the table. And I think, I think the applicant suggested that they were amenable to that with that change. I thought it was 9 to 1. No, 9 to 12. Do you know if you are representing? I thought he said 9 to 1, but he would, you know, it's not going to be every Saturday. It's just when he needs to be there. So he would like this to move forward and have this be done tonight. So. Sure. I have no opposition to one. What? I heard 9 to 12 last week. Yeah, I thought I heard 9 to 12 last week as well, um, but I don't have any. If, if certain members remember this being 1 o'clock, I don't. I, 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 don't I, do, I personally do not think it should go into the afternoon. Um, I, I think that 9 to 12 seems very reasonable as a compromise, because originally he asked for 8 to 12. Correct. Mr. Dwyer. Uh, if I, my recollection is that he wanted to keep the 8 to 12, but he said he would uh, refrain from moving equipment uh, until 9. So he could be on there setting stuff up, you know, shooting grades and things like that on the site. But then between 9 and 12, that's when he would actively be moving equipment and, and working. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. But, no, but no trucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, there will be no trucks on Saturday. Right. Okay, I just want to be clear about that. Yeah, that, that was in the initial request that there's no trucks on Saturday at all, but he'll have site work like bulldozers or excavators that may be moving things around. Mm -hmm. But again, if we do nine for 12 for any equipment work, he can certainly be there earlier than that because he can be on the property right. since he owns it anytime he wants. So. I 
reached out to the um, planning board last week, not the planning board, to the planning office, um, to Adam, Bernie, and to Marjorie. Adam was on vacation, so I spoke with Marjorie, who's uh, administrative support for the planning department. And my question was what the normal construction hours are in town uh, when they approve, when the planning board makes approvals, uh, what they condition most work to be. And the answer is 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Uh, and that they make adjustments to that depending on the location, uh, such as a more dense area will likely be put between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. So with the understanding that construction uh, occurs generally in town uh, within the times that are being recommended, I, I don't have an issue with the 7.30 to 4 proposed during the weekdays. I don't have an issue with the uh, 8 to 12 or even offering an extension to that to be 8 to 1 o'clock on Saturdays uh, with the understanding that equipment would not uh, be used until 9 a.m. Okay, that went beyond what the request was, but okay. I, from what I'm hearing, and I'll just try to make this succinct, that without objection, there's 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., which is what the applicant is requesting on weekdays, is okay, and if we make equipment operation 9 a.m., to noon on Saturday, that would appease everyone. And I think that would be fine. Yeah, quick question, Mr. Alonzo. Um, I thought I just heard you say the new hours during the week till 4.30 in the afternoon. No, 4. I, 4. 4. That's 7.30 to 4. Correct. Okay. 7.30 to 4. Yeah, yep. okay. Anybody else have any questions about this? I would entertain a motion with that regard to that. So we are looking to approve the earth removal permit with changes in hours weekdays 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on adding Saturday hours 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. So moved. I have a second. Second. All right. With well, no, noting that between the hours of 8 and 9, he can do other work, notwithstanding the use of... Uh, yeah, but it's his property, so he can be on the property anytime he wants. He doesn't need approval for that. I just that. want to make that clear, though. Yep, okay. So moved. You asked, Mr. Chair, if there was any uh, opposition to what's being proposed. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone wants to offer any comments about what's being proposed that's not necessarily oppositional okay anybody else have any comments about what's proposed okay we're ready to vote so all those in favor uh it was moved by mr franco seconded by mr marino uh, all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed aye. none okay so let's uh is this on here? These hours? So change hours to this and that. Okay. We have to put this on here somewhere. So I'm assigning if it has to be reprinted. Yeah, so those have to be. Oh, this one's fine. It says eight, eight to initial nine. it? Or do we have to just print it? That's fine. Okay. It'd be the one in there. Hmm? It'd be the second one. That was the original. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Uh, ratification of town manager's appointment of a temporary veterans agent, David Lozon, Jr. Okay. So um, a little bit about David. He's been helping veterans for the last 12 years. He's currently a part-time veterans agent in West Boylston. He previously worked at the Recovery Center of America and the New Patriots Veterans Outreach Center in Fitchburg as their operations director before it closed. And he has a, his 
veteran service officer certification and training in veterans mediations. And he served in the Army, ending his career as in the military as a staff sergeant in 2009. So this is a temporary position as we uh, look for a long-time replacement. Any questions from mm -hmm. the town manager? No questions. And I would entertain a motion of ratification, ratifying the town manager's appointment of a temporary veterans agent, David Lozon Jr., until such time as we uh, fill a full-time position or, or permanent replacement, I should say. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. All right. Town manager report. shorter report than last week. Um, so I'll start off with the vacancies. There are two vacancies on the Architectural Preservation District Commission, one citizen at large and one representative from the Historical Commission, one vacancy on the Bylaw Review Committee, one vacancy for a citizen at large appointed by the town moderator for the Capital Planning Committee, two vacancies on the Commissioner of Trust Funds, which is a joint appointment between the Commissioner of Trust Funds and the Select Board until the next annual town election, multiple vacancies on the Economic Development Committee, the one vacancy on the Senior Workoff Program Committee, and one associate vacancy on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Interested persons can find the application form on the town website, complete them, and return them to the Select Board's office. Updates from the DPW, uh, one on the Pleasant Street Bridge. The DPW director has worked with our engineer to address some safety concerns, including the gap between the face of the rail and the edge of the pavement and the height of the bridge railing. To add additional protection on the height of the railing, a six foot fence will be installed on the back side of the railing that would provide pedestrians with a more comfortable railing height and the gap will be addressed with a two by 10 pressure treated wood. Complete streets, sidewalk ramps. The DBW director has asked our engineer to review all the sidewalk ramps that have been installed so far as part of the Complete Streets project. He and I both have concerns that were also independently raised by a resident um, that we would like to have reviewed as far as their ADA compliance. So as soon as we have those inspected, I will provide the board an update. Donation of commercial freezer and refrigeration units. Dave McDonald has secured a donation to the town for a large commercial freezer and commercial refrigeration unit that will be delivered to the TC Passio's kitchen. These units will be used by the Lions, Lions Club Food Pantry once they relocate to this space. So this will, uh, currently there are two uh, uh, units there. Um, they're 20 years old um, and uh, haven't been serviced. Uh, recently so that these will be good replacements for those units so thank you mr. McDonald IT director position the IT director Steve Melandrinos resigned from his position last week due for due to personal reasons this position is currently split between the town and school with 30 percent school uh, town 70 percent school and we have temporarily transitioned tasks over to the relevant staff and are managing this internally at this point. I'll keep the board updated with any changes going forward. In other announcements, the last day that the town beach will be open will be Sunday, August 29th. The Lunenburg Farmers Market on the Ritter Lawn is held every Sunday until October 10th, 10 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And the fall special town meeting will be Tuesday, November 16th at 7 p.m. at the Middle School High School and warrant articles can be submitted to the town manager's office now until September 28th at 5 p.m. Any questions for the town manager no on the questions. report? I will say just a couple of comments. So first of all, thank you also to Mr. McDonald for securing those and thank you for the town manager and meeting with the Lions Club and I think that the TC Pasios is a much better solution for their food pantry than was the previous uh, location. So I'm glad that all that is working well and everybody knows that it's temporary depending on what happens with the Pasios building. Um, on the Pleasant Street Bridge and the complete street sidewalk ramps, I, I just have to comment that I, I don't understand 
how these engineered projects have these deficiencies where else somebody has to bring them to your attention that we have to fix a or or fill in a gap with a bridge that's just recently done with pressure treated two by ten lumber and extend the railing as if nobody knew that people were going to be walking over this bridge or with the sidewalk ramps that you know resident uh, several residents but one in particular has noted that don't look like it meets the standards of ADA. We did the complete streets and we did the sidewalks in large part, not solely for, but in large part to address the ADA uh, accessibility. accessibility issues and to have one not meet or seemingly not meet those codes seems to defeat the whole purpose. So I, I'm just marveling at whatever engineering is out there not fulfilling these jobs. Do they not know for what purpose these things are being built? It just seems to be, you now these aren't small oversights. These are like to the core of what they're building. Do you want my opinion on that? If you'd like to offer it. No. I okay, don't. well. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear it. <laughs> I, I would hear it. <laughs> there you go, see? <laughs> Lou would like to hear it. All right. Were either of those projects considered complete at the time that the observations were made? Because there's usually a quality control check at the end of projects. They weren't signed off on as complete. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. So it wasn't a complete, complete streets. It was just complete streets. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, you know, sometimes vendors make, I'm not making excuses. Vendors, you know, they knew what they were. Vendors make mistakes. Well, but, you know, and you again, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of spotlight on, let's say, the sidewalk project, yeah. this Complete Streets project. And the speculation was, well, this clearly, you know, th this l has all the workings of being a temporary fix until they do something more permanent. Mm -hmm. And so if they come back and say, no, that was the permanent one, <laughs> you know, I question people's dedication to their job. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what the engineer will come out and review is how it was built according to the specifications and if it, you know, meets that, you know, the requirements of the specifications. Yeah, and then they'll go back to the contractor and say, this is wrong, this is right. wrong. So it seems as if our intervention is prior to that point. Yeah, right. but very appropriate to bring it to yeah. Right. Yeah, their attention. Well, I like to, yeah. I, I, I want to thank all the people, you know, at home who make these who make these observations and bring them to our attention. I mean, not everybody who works in the town can be everywhere. And we, we look to people to point out things uh, and, and just say, hey, I'm not sure that this is anything, but can you look into this and, and address your concerns? That's how, you know, a lot of these things come to, to come to light. It's just from just people driving over it, walking over someplace, seeing something. So thank you for those people who, who are submitting those observations for our review um, and with a tone that says hey I'm not sure if this is right or if this is even finished but I think people should know this I think that the, the, the tone of it is also very important none of these were accusatory they were just like hey I think there's an issue here that people may need to address all right so discussion of the complete streets project and the main street portion of the project so this um, agenda topic relates to the upper common and the um, we discussed at the last meeting mm -hmm. and a um, what was thought to be a good compromise that came out of that meeting after reviewing the area again um, found a by removing the pine tree which um, seems to be a consensus that um, we can replace it down the road with a smaller tree because we're going to have to replace that tree anyways. Um, we can lessen the impact to the garden, the exterior garden alongside Main Street by going through more the center uh, right by the, the sign. Okay. So that's similar to, similar to the original plan, but a slight S modification. Similar. It's kind of right in the middle. Okay. <laughs> right. It's between the two plans. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. Great. I'm sure the Garden Club is very happy. Have they been notified? I believe so by uh, Mr. Oliver. Okay. So. But 
as he previously stated, you know, he'll work with them on removal of and, you know, moving over shrubs or um, plants. Right. Um, Can I just give you my police, ex-police chief's perspective on this? I, I think that's a good idea. As a matter of fact, a lot of that stuff should be removed because that's an island, theoretically, and it obstructs your vision mm -hmm. going into those intersections. Uh, so I think it's a great idea. I would have suggested that last week, start getting rid of some of them trees. It's really, it, it can create a, a hazard out there more than anything, as much as I know people love trees and so forth and the beauty of it, but you know, it's at an intersection. Right. And it's a lot of intersecting streets right there. Um, so I like the I like that idea. Okay. I think it'll be much better. It was also discussed that potentially, because the, the flagpole where it is now, when you fly the flag, especially if you fly it at half mast, it, it's caught in that tree. So we, we may, if we remove the pine tree, we actually may move the flagpole to where the pine tree is. It'd be much more visible and much more easy to light because lighting is also a problem. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, that's not, not if it, it obstructed the flagpole. That's what I was just saying. You can't even see the flag something. Right, right. But I'd rather. So. That's not going to obstruct. Yep. So that was what discussed too, so. That's good. Great. Okay, a discussion on the survey of boundaries on Townsend Harbor Road and Woodland Drive regarding the possible encroachments on Cowdery Conservation property. So that we discussed this briefly last week. Uh, we had gotten a quote for the surveying of the entire Cowdery. Mm -hmm. I was con Mr. Chairman, I was confused by all this when I read it. I looked at the maps and so forth. Well, they, this this uh, survey hasn't been done yet, right? Nope. That is correct. Because there was a this letter from town council that makes it sound like. Where is it? Where did I see that? I think it was from last October. Yeah, yeah. we're we're we oh. are and in our letter All right, from last right. October. We are uh, well, actually two Octobers ago. We are no last October. Yeah, that's right. That's we are right. asserting that that they are encroaching, and there's a dispute between where the actual property lines are, which is what triggered a request from the Conservation Commission to do an actual survey of yeah, the property. I, I, I just I skimmed over this. I didn't even see the date. But w what confused me was we're issuing a letter telling them to basically clean up this driveway and move everything out of there. But we don't really know. At the time, we didn't even know for sure that he was encroaching on the property. Now we're asking for a survey. So. Well, that's not uncommon because we assert where the property lines are. And if there's a discrepancy or somebody disputes it, then obviously the claiming party has to determine. Well, yeah, no, I get that. I, I guess what I was thinking is that the property lines were uh, shown from G, uh, the G, uh, G I F, G -I -S, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. which are not typically yeah. all right. that accurate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. All right, I get it. I get what you're saying, though. You're still, based on that, you're asserting. Yeah. So. So you answer, answer my question anyway. <laughs> I, guess. I did or didn't. No, you did. Okay, yeah. good. All right. Yeah. Um, so, I think the question was we wanted to think about it, whether we surveyed the whole property at the price we were given, and conservation indicated, and and the, the chair could not be here tonight, but indicated that they just wanted to do this property line for this for 192 this, for 192 mm -hmm. townsend harbor road mm -hmm. uh, and we said well for the price we're getting why don't we survey the whole property and i'm certainly lean toward that because the property it would be nice to have a final determination and we're not doing it for the, any other purpose other than now we'll know and we'll have these these lines determined yeah in, in, not for the purpose that there are but there could be other encroachments on other properties that border the cowdry as well. Well, there was a second map here too, is it? Sorry. Yeah, there were some. There were some possibilities. They said yes. Yeah, I mean, one of them it looked like the line was practically going through the person's house. Uh, how could that be? Well, I, I, I don't have an answer to that question. No, I know. I'm just. That's saying why we that. have surveyors. Well, exactly. 
That's why I had G. So I'm, I'm leaning toward approving the whole thing and get the whole cowdery surveyed for that price. Those and, boundaries and, that where there's encroachment, right, with possible it, right. encroachment. Yep. Well, and then there's a question of uh, do we want them staked or not? So just to, to clarify what we're talking about, um, the I don't see the quote in our drive. So I'll, which what week was that? That we that was last week. Last week. Yeah. All right. So let me go back to the 17th. This is the original. This is the second quote. Uh, or uh, Kevin, am I missing it? It was. Six thousand five hundred. I think was the amount. Yeah, I saw it too, but I, I don't. I'm having trouble finding it. It was on the under the town manager report. Got it. Thank you. Sixty five hundred to perform a partial boundary survey of the three possible encroachments, and an additional fifteen hundred that the property lines could be staked. All right. So. To, so then the clarifying is that for eight thousand uh, dollars this is to survey the entire country no, no, no these, these partial property boundaries lines, these were partial the boundaries encroachments the partial boundaries were the three encroachments mm -hmm. possible encroachments. possible do yes. we have any information on those other three encroachments on yes. those other two because uh, everything is focused on one that we have in our drive and I, I also want to just make a general comment that we have a, a legal letter that went out and I, I've noted before that I, you know, I, I take a little issue with us issuing a legal letter in October before we have a conversation with an owner, but that's neither here nor there. And I do know that that was remedied and resolved. I, I'd like to get these legal letters that we're sending out if we're supposed to, you know, have some oversight over litigation. If I can also get a copy of them when we send them, that would be appreciated. Those were forwarded to the board, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't recall getting it, so I'll double check that. Right. Um, I believe it was July 13th, as I reference in my report. No, I, I have a copy of the letter here. I guess what I'm saying is the letter that we have is dated October the 29th of last year. Um, and I, I'm saying that it would be nice to get it sooner when it's issued, you know, closer to when they're issued. Yeah. And I was referring to um, the map. You wanted more information. We discussed it at the July 13th meeting. And in yeah. the Google Drive is a, a map showing... The oh, the other two possible the other two encroachments. Possible encroachments. Okay. okay, thank you. You said that was July 13th. 13th. Thank you. Townsend Harbor folder? Yes. Uh, is this what we're looking at? Yep. All right. So those red lines. Oh, that's why, because I'm colorblind, so I don't see red. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Just so I'm clear. So here. Okay. Right from here to here. Yep. And here and here. Got it. I'm always amazed that when people can see how, anyway. <laughs> so it all looks the same to me. I know. <laughs> all right. So, what is the pleasure of the board in these in the, getting these surveys? How many yeah. How many total did they say that they discovered when they looked at their maps? Thirty two. Twenty four, I believe. Twenty four. Mm -hmm. That's right. with possible encroachments on all yeah. boundaries, not not the Cowdery alone. Well, what would that cost the town? No idea. I mean, well, I mean, we know what it's going to cost to do that one. Part. Well, again, you're not, they don't always come up that you have to do it. So we've, we've issued letters to people who have removed things because either they agreed or it just wasn't, it just wasn't worth it. They didn't dispute the boundary. Yeah. So it's only, you only have to do it if the people dispute it and you really feel that 
there's a big problem. I mean, then you got to make a decision. Is it worth doing? Well, in cases like this, and, and I know this guy's going to dispute, or this guy's already disputing it. This other one here too, where the line almost goes through the guy's house. I think it's really important to do a survey because we're talking about taking away a guy's driveway, most you know, a big chunk of his land. Uh, in this case, we're going to take away enough land he won't even have a place for a driveway, and maybe have to move part of his roof going to that red line. You know what I mean? So I think it's really important that we do some d due diligence and make sure before we, you know, Im impose that kind of uh, hardship on somebody that we're doing the right thing, that, we're, that we are, they are in fact on our prop. So I, I'm, I'm all for it, is what I'm saying. I completely agree with that sentiment. Um, GIS maps are, are uh, they are prone to error. They're not, they're not exact. Um, and just based on the encroachments we see in this small area for the other properties, they all look to seem to be off about the same amount. So it wouldn't surprise me if we go out there, we do the survey, and we may find some encroachment, but not as um, dramatic as, as shown in the uh, uh, GIS uh, maps. Okay. Mr. Franco? Yeah, I just want clarity on, on this. Since I just want to make sure we're talking about the same stuff here. There, there's It's $6,500 to perform the partial boundary survey of the three possible encroachment boundaries. And then an additional 1500 to actually stake in those subject three encroachment boundaries, yep. right? Okay. Yep. But I th was there discussion or, or, or suggestion to survey beyond these Okay. Oh, okay. Is for. All right. Okay. I'm clear. Thanks. Mr. Jeffrey. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not in favor of this proposal. Um, I, my concern is not the encroachments and the possible encroachments. My concern is the 24 other violations that have been identified. Uh, you know, I, as I said before, and I went to a conservation commission meeting and, and I said it, uh, there as well, that it would be nice if there was a uh, process by which they methodically looked at those property lines. It sounds as if they have uh, implemented that process to methodically look at these boundary lines. What I don't know the answer to is how many of these 24 violations are they going to then pursue a survey for? Um, I'd much rather do it at the same time uh, as a comprehensive set of these are the violations, these are the areas, you know, here's the information, let's move forward, rather than a piecemealed approach. Uh, I know that this violation has been in existence for a while, uh, or the, the alleged violation has been in existence for a while. I do understand that it's looking at three different properties, um, but are we prepared to spend, you know, if, if we're going to spend, if out of the 24, if we're doing three, if every three is costing us $8,000, that's $64,000. Are we going to spend $64,000 on surveys this fiscal year? I mean, if the answer is no, then how much money are we going to spend on surveys this fiscal year? If that answer is $15,000, $20,000, I think we should be a little more strategic about which ones we're going to address, not just the first one that kind of popped up. Can I make a comment? Absolutely. Okay. I, um, I would say, I think for the town, I think it would be easier to do it piecemeal, put together a plan as far as looking at each of the different conservation properties yep. and um, working it that way and working it into the budget as far as um, what's needed for survey work each year going in, in a comprehensive plan with all 24 locations. Yep. Um, right now, we're focused on the Cowdery property, and that's why I think this one makes sense to go forward at this time. Um, and moving forward, we can address each of the other properties. I can, um, I can accept that mm -hmm. approach and that rationale. Mm -hmm. Are these all the violations on the Cowdery property that were identified? Yes. Okay. So there's, they're not coming back with an eastern boundary, and here's four more. Nope. Looking at, and that's using our GIS software. Okay. Yeah. Personally, I am for supporting this conservation commission. We, you know, we appoint them to do these kind of looks, and that things don't come up altogether. So you made a point that they took to heart. So they looked at it larger. So they got 24. They'll address them as they come, 
you know, I, I, unless somebody is showing me intentional, intentional nature that they're avoiding certain ones and doing other ones, you know, they're gonna they're gonna come up in a specific order. If they can group them in properties that bound this conservation land and this conservation land, that's fine. But eventually, I agree with the town manager. We're gonna need to do them, you know in some kind of order, but it's gonna to have to be serial. We're not gonna be able to do them all at the same time. And also, the violations that are alleged may not be the same or as egregious in some areas as others. So I'm gonna leave it for the Conservation Commission to you know, make that determination. And unless I disagree with their determination, which somebody would have to show me that they're being egregious in their determinations, then we'll just take them as they come up. Okay, so I want to take a motion that we uh, approve the survey now for the three potential encroachments against the Cowdery property for the $8,000, $6,500, which is for the partial boundary survey, and $1,500 for the staking of those potential areas. So moved. We'll have a second. Second. Any further discussion? Thank you to the town manager for that additional input that has persuaded me. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Excellent. Discussion on revised request for proposals for the landscape architectural service for 30 School Street. So, of course, we, we found out last week that there were no submittals for our RFP, and town manager gave uh, I guess the assistant town manager did surveyed the people who had taken out the RFPs or requested the packages, and we had some responses about why. Um, and so we are looking to resubmit this and address some of the concerns, the major concerns being that there was the inclusion of task three, which is construction documents, which I think was way more ambitious and uh, then should have been included and also the deadline for this fall instead of maybe next annual town meeting so I think we should um, at least on its face those two things should be removed we should resubmit it or re-advertise the RFP with a later date and also the removal of that task so that we get back conceptual drawings you know architected concept plans of which we can choose one and then go to construction documents Agreed. Did I sum, sum yes, up that? Yes, you did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are we voting uh, on this? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to vote on it. Yeah. The only thing I would also add was task two, um, which is the design development, that may be a little extensive as well, as far as the what we have for an appropriation, and like to hear input on that. Oh. I agreed with you. Um, I mean, frankly, based on the budget we mm -hmm. have now, mm -hmm. I think we may get task one done. Um, but personally, I'd like to see this put out just to see if we can get some pricing on it. So if we have to go to special town meeting for an additional appropriation, we do. Right. Okay. What page? If you can zoom that in. That is page five. Okay. Page four. No, task two, you said this. Task two eight. is on page eight. eight. Okay. Yep. Okay. My tracked version says five. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking at the tracked version? So I'm not sure what your additional recommendations are to the town manager. I think you're is it in tonight's? Mm -hmm. I don't have a track number two. I have a revised RFP. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, you're right. Is there another version? No, there's not. I'm looking okay, at an old it. version. Okay. <laughs> um, that's what? That's it. Okay. Yeah, so with those revisions, I think, you know, again, we want to get this to the next step. I know it's, so does everybody agree with that? I agree. I agree. I, I was asking to the town manager if she can, if you can clarify what you're asking us about task number two. Essentially that the scope under task two may exceed our appropriation. And so what area do you recommend cutting back on? 
because the scope is cover sheet, copy of existing conditions, demolition plan, layout materials plan, grading drainage plan, lighting plan, utility plan, landscape improvement plan, and construction details. So yeah, that is a bit beyond the scope. <laughs> so you're asking us to talk about where we think? Yes. Got yeah. it. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Well, the cover sheet's probably going to stay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's important for us to add a, you know, come out of this with some awareness. I don't know about the utilities at this, maybe not, and uh, if that's necessary, but I don't know. If, I'll defer to, um, to Todd on this. You know, one of the thoughts I had was that you know, maybe we have them do task one, the site analysis and, and schematic design, mm -hmm. and come up with a proposal for what they feel is appropriate plans for, you know, the second, the design development stage. So they can tell us, come up with a proposal for, for the next phases of like the work. Yeah. So then they, so we're, they don't say, well, we don't even know if we're gonna need a lighting plan or a utility plan um, and what structures we're gonna need, or if they think we do, based on the input we give them on the concepts, they say, okay, based on all this stuff, here's your proposal for the next phases. So then you can get those, you know, uh, appropriations for those uh, at annual town meeting or special town meeting. Yeah, I think that's a great sense. idea. Okay. For deliverables for task one, um, since if we're looking at final, um, a final product for that, should that include narrowing it coming back and narrowing it down to one concept plan that can be presented not inclusive of everything that goes along with task two just narrowing it down to one concept plan i think so well i guess after yeah i mean i guess we only have to fill one after we after plant you know task one mm -hmm. which is where we would talk more openly and maybe you know thumbnail a few things we could select that it may be a, after a public That's hearing what, yeah but that we could select one and then focus in on it if it's if they're going to have a deliverable of of uh, one concept plan based on after our public meetings i think that will certainly we have a much better chance of delivering task one in the appropriation that we have yep and that would also probably budget for uh, development of a proposal for future work to be incorporated in it as well. Right, because if you narrow it down to one concept plan and then they have to provide a proposal for based on that one concept plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm for that. Okay, all right, I have direction. <laughs> so you'll provide that at the, our September 8th meeting, 7th Seven. meeting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For, for clarity, if I could, um, are you, are you, because I'm getting lost between task one and task two here, you're, you're talking about reducing the scope of task one to present one concept plan. Do I have that right? No, uh, to uh, come to present two plans. Yep. The board decide on one plan. Okay. Um, and then they include a proposal as part of that based on that one plan. I, okay. Understood. Which would what would be what would we would need next? Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. I don't think we need to vote on that because you're going to yeah. resubmit the RFP before you before you publish it, yes. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's put that on the September seventh agenda. Do we? Want, so we're going to talk about timeline as well. We can okay. sure. So really, all I need is when you would want a finished product and I'll work uh, I'll try to work out a time frame backwards well November 16th <laughs> <laughs> where where is it in the document uh, that's right towards now. the front of the document it's on page three responses do page four again keep going Section two, uh, one point four of the schedule, right there. There we go. Oh, that's when their proposals are due. That's but it works down. So um, 
They well, wouldn't need that last last check mark that would be eliminated because that was really related to task. Um, but this is the bid schedule floating around between. No, it's, no, it's, it's telling them when we anticipate um, a contract award when they would. So we want to fill the, we want to fill these things in based on our discussion. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when do you? Based on our discussion here, do you think when do you think we can advertise Heather? Because then we get to work from the advertisement date through the rest. Right, right after it's approved on the seventh. Um, okay. So it would be probably um, first week in, in October. For, for second week, because it's okay. it would have to go into um, the publication, and it's actually not published until the following week. Okay. So. So it'd be due on let's say what ten, just ten fourteen or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay. Anticipate dates for interview views. Well, that's. Yeah. I don't really. I can fill in those dates if I know when you want a finished product by. I mean, based on just based on where we are in the year, mm -hmm. I think this is going to. We want to finish product before annual town meeting. Right, and I think we have ample schedule for that. So, I mean, I I would think 120 days from bid date should be a reasonable amount of time for them to get the work done. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you figure this is going to be more or less for the appropriate appropriation we have about 200 or so hours. So for one person, that's a month work. Considering they have multiple other projects and they can space this out, so this is probably two to three months plus scheduling meetings and public meetings with us. Mm -hmm. So I think four months seems like a reasonable amount of I time. I would agree with you. So, I was, so we could say what, March 1st? Yeah. Okay. I mean, from my standpoint, it could, I mean, if we're gonna put, potentially if we know we're going okay, we could put in a placeholder yeah. and just so we get it on the warrant, because mm -hmm. we can always yank it from the warrant if we don't think we're getting anywhere. Um, or we don't have a product we want to move forward, so we don't have, we don't have to worry about bumping up to it. But the, I think the latest it can be is like, you know, end of March is like the absolute latest the right. final product can be. But really, it should be we should aim for March first. Okay. That's and most of the stuff is not, you know, you may have to come back to the site one other time, two other times. Most of the stuff is going to be somebody just conceptualizing right. with our talks. So. We do have a lot of information yeah. that we're already providing. It's going to be desk work, yeah. not field work for the most part. Agreed. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that give you enough information? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Approval of August 3rd, August 10th, and August 5th, 17th minutes. Does anybody have any changes that they want to cite in these? Hearing none, uh, I am not in that one, so I will entertain a motion that we approve the minutes of August 3rd and August 17th. So moved. A second. second. Um, just as a point of order, can I? Can you are we, not present we, on the right. 17th. So we, can, we have to break them all out separately since I can't right, vote yes. on the third. All right. So let's do it. So I yeah. I withdraw. motion to approve August 3rd, 2021. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of August 10th. I am absent of this meeting, so I will not be voting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? None. And the minutes of August 17th, 2021, where Mr. Franco was not present. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, so sign the ones that are appropriate to you. <laughs> warrants. No warrants today. Wow. No. What happened? Uh, action items. Any action items? Any committee reports? TCP meets tomorrow. 
530. Anybody else have any committee reports? MPO is canceled. Economic Development Committee meets on Thursday. Okay. <gasps> is it in person or Zoom? In person, yes. Okay. Here? 6 p.m. Uh, Ritter. The Ritter building, okay. Okay. All right, we have no meeting next week, next Tuesday being the last Tuesday of the month. We have no meeting, so our next meeting is September 7th. Uh, before then, I wish everybody a happy Labor Day. Uh, any public comment from the public? Any public comment from the board? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Good night, everyone. We will see you in two weeks. And until then, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Thank you. Good night.